Am I the asshole for asking my fiance to skip this year's Christmas family vacation because our baby is due? Context. I've gone to Florida with his family for the past five years for at least part of Christmas. Every other year, I returned before him to spend Christmas Day with my family. This year is the first time in a long time that all the other siblings are able to overlap dates. My fiance has major FOMO, which is why this is a sensitive subject. His parents have always been weird about keeping their family close. They've never said it outright, but little things suggest they don't consider me completely part of their family yet since we aren't married. Also, my parents are overseas dealing with a grandparent emergency. My mom has been kept in the loop though and is trying to come back as soon as she can. My fiance and I are expecting our first baby due December 30th. His family has a vacation home in Florida and they have gone every year during the holidays for about a month until after New Year's. He agreed not to go this year because of the baby, but his family is insisting that he go and come back on the 28th, which is, quote, ample time time before the baby is due. So he bought tickets for December 15th through the 28th. His reasoning is that his parents really want him there and his siblings will also be going. This is bothering me a lot more than I thought because I know pregnancies are unpredictable, especially in the last trimester and if anything happens leading up to the due date, I need him here. The other reason I guess it's more selfish is that I will be spending Christmas by myself. It's not the main reason why I'm bothered, but it's a small part of it. My parents are away until December 26, and my friends have their families, so I'll be completely alone. He's been spending Christmas every year in Florida since he was 15, and there will be many more trips after the baby is born. I don't know why he has to go this year. Anytime I bring it up, it results in a very uncomfortable fight about my expectations to put me first rather than his parents. I don't even bring it up anymore. His parents have always been kind to me, but they also don't see any problems, so I think I'm going crazy. Am I the asshole here? Am I the asshole for refusing to be my friend's alibi so he can cheat on his girlfriend? I have known my friend Matt since we started college. We're in the same program and have been roommates since day one. Overall, I'd say Matt is a great guy. However, he has a terrible tendency to cheat. Throughout college, I think Matt had five to seven different girlfriends and each of those relationships ended because he would cheat. Back in January, he started dating his current girlfriend, Jen, and has been with her far longer than any of the previous relationships. From my interactions with Jen, I know she's a wonderful person. She's very polite, beautiful, and clearly devoted to Matt. For the past few weeks, Matt has also developed a close relationship with his anatomy lab partner, Cindy. It's become pretty clear to me and our other housemates, Kyle, Robert, and Omar, that there is some romantic relationship between them. We even all met Cindy as she came by our house a few times. Long story short, Matt has told me and the other guys that things between him and Cindy are moving fairly quickly and that Jin is completely in the dark about this. He told us that, for the foreseeable future, he'll be spending a few nights hanging out at Cindy's place. Here's the issue. Jin and her roommates don't live that far from us, about a seven minute walk, so there's a good chance she'll come by looking for him, according to Matt. Therefore, he wants all of us to make excuses for his absence and potentially reassure Jen that he isn't up to anything bad. Kyle and Robert are fully on board with this, as they consider it bro code. Omar is fully against this, and while he has not said he'd tell Jen, he has refused to lie for Matt and has been urging him to end things with Cindy. I would say I'm more neutral. I don't think what Matt's doing is appropriate but I don't think it's my place to tell Matt how to manage his relationships. I told him that while I wouldn't seek Jen out and tell her what's going on, I wouldn't lie to her either about where he is and instead say, I don't know. We all argued about this for a while and the general gist of things is that Kyle, Robert, and Matt all think I'm being a bit of an ass for not being more cooperative. Aside from this, I don't think there is really much I can do. Moving to somewhere else is both economically and logistically unfeasible, so I think trying to avoid stirring the pot is the best bet. Am I the asshole? I'll start this update by saying Jen found out last night. Like Matt predicted, she came home to our house Tuesday evening. I saw her pretty quickly since I was also coming back from buying some food. She asked me if I knew where Matt was and I said I didn't know because I genuinely didn't know at the time. She mentioned how he wasn't responding to her texts and that she was worried about him and I felt pretty bad hearing that. Kyle, who was inside, came out at this point and said that Matt was in his anatomy lab and then reassured her that he'd contact her once he was finished. She didn't seem entirely satisfied with that answer but thanked us 
us anyways and left. Once she was gone, Kyle told me that Matt was actually on a date with Cindy. Since Matt sometimes brings Cindy over, he'll text the house group chat before they come over to ensure that Jen isn't around. He did this on Tuesday night and Kyle did alert him that Jen had stopped by looking for him. So he stayed over with Cindy on Tuesday night. Wednesday evening, only Omar and I are home. Kyle was with his own girlfriend and Robert had an exam. Around 7 p.m., we got a text on the group chat from Matt saying he plans on bringing Cindy over around 8.30 and he asked if Jen came by. I told him that I hadn't seen her and things went on as usual. I'll add that Omar has refused to respond to these specific text messages from Matt. So there was an expectation on me to clarify if Jen was here or not. A little after 8 p.m., Jen comes by with one of her friends. They asked us where Matt was since Jen hadn't been seeing him a lot lately. Before I could even say anything, Omar told them to come back at 8.30 and Matt should be home. They left and I did argue with Omar about his decision to tell them to come back since it was inevitably going to cause drama, but he didn't care. I did text Matt and told him about Jen potentially returning, but since he was driving, he didn't read the message. At this stage, I gave up trying to contact Matt and went up to my room. A little after 8.30, Matt walked in with Cindy and not long after that Jin and her friend returned. Omar let them in. Long story short, there was a lot of Jin yelling and Matt lying and apologizing. I didn't bother coming down since I could hear it all from my room. After about 10 minutes of this, Jin and her friend left. Matt sent Cindy home after this and was pretty pissed at what happened. I reminded him that I sent him a text message, which he now saw, and Omar played dumb, acting like he didn't see Matt's message about asking if Jin was home, but did confirm to him that he told Jin to come back after the first time she came because quote, he didn't think Matt was dumb enough to go out with Cindy two nights back to back. Robert and Kyle came home after this point and I filled them in on what happened. There was definitely some tension in the house this morning as Matt thinks this all could have been avoided had Omar been more helpful. He also partially blames Cindy for wanting to come over so often. Overall, Matt doesn't really seem to care that Jen found out and broke things off with him. He said that he'll try apologizing one more time as he does prefer Jen to Cindy and if she doesn't accept, he'll leave things as they are. As for Cindy, Matt has already told Kyle, Robert, and me this morning that he plans on ending things with her after the December exam season. He says that he wants to be single again for New Year's so he can have a fresh start. Kyle and Robert think it's pretty hilarious considering how much trouble he got into to be with her. Things have ended more smoothly than I thought. I have made it abundantly clear to Matt to keep me out of his relationship woes. I have also asked Jen's friend how Jen was holding up. As expected, Jen was very upset about the entire ordeal, and she and her friends considered everyone at our house, aside from Omar, to be complicit and awful. Bride made a profit from the Bachelorette trip. Sister-in-law drama. So much tea. I'm glad I can spill to my Riddick community because I can't gossip about it to my family. So, about six months ago, the bride planned her destination bachelor trip and charged each of the 11 girls $650 for the Airbnb. I was salty about the high cost, but it's my sister-in-law, so I sucked it up and I paid it. I was also suspicious about the high AF price, so I did a cross-check and the Airbnb listing and I checked it out. Yes, this bitch wanted... $2,300 a night for a beachfront house. Well, today I'm chatting about wedding stuff with my brother, who is marrying future sister-in-law, and he says something along the lines of, what a relief her dad paid for the Airbnb, because that would have been so expensive for your group. I about choked. I said, hey, are you sure about that? Because all of the girls paid $650 for the house alone. Maybe run it by her. His face turned purple, so I take it that he had no idea. Oh to add to the greed going on here, when I got married, I flew her out, paid for her accommodations, paid for hair and makeup, paid for her bridesmaid dress, and paid for transportation because she was going through a hard time. She now has the balls to steal from me. I get that weddings are expensive, but don't have one if it requires stealing from your bridesmaids. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming I'm the only bridesmaid who is aware of this. God. <laughs> Not sure if I should spill it to the group or if I should just let it go. Spill it. <laughs> There's a chance her dad stepped in and paid for it after the fact and she chose not to refund us. I'm just not clear on the situation and want to avoid embarrassing my brother. What do you guys think so far? Wow. Um, obviously, she should, she should spill it. Update number one. 
Thanks for all the advice and the support. Yes, I agree with most of you who are saying I am morally obligated to spill the beans because $650 is not child's play. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to talk to my brother and give him a chance to clear it up with his sister-in-law. Before I make a scene, I want to understand what's really going on here. For example, did daddy pay for the trip, but sister-in-law decided to put that towards a different wedding expense? Things like that. The answer will determine how slash when I tell the rest of the bridesmaids. I'm going to give my brother only one to two days because this trip is literally next week. Stay tuned for update number two. I'm excited. <laughs> All right, update number two. So I regrouped with my brother. My mom has also stepped in, bypassed my brother, and got some more info directly from her dad. Here's the tea. Future sister-in-law's dad did not offer to cover the cost until a few months after we paid for the trip. This was after he found out the cost and was pissed that she chose a $2,300 a night house and then asked us to pay for it. Apparently, he threatened not to pay for the wedding if she added any more expensive onto the wedding party. Turns out she originally wanted it at the Maldives and he forbid her. According to my mom, who chatted with him directly, he felt embarrassed when he heard about the Airbnb price and wanted to save face with my side of the family. So he gave sister-in-law about 7 k to cover the cost of the house. She was supposed to refund us, but obviously that never happened. This is where it gets good. Even better? So my mom went total FBI mode and learned <laughs> that in addition to not paying us, sister-in-law didn't put the money towards a different wedding expense either. She doesn't even have it anymore. So where did it go? What did she spend it on? There is currently a full-blown investigation going on between our families right now. I have been asking my mom not to alert the bridesmaids just yet in case we get a little bit more info and come to a resolution with both sister-in-law and her dad. But we will tell them ASAP one way or another. I will come back tomorrow with another update. How did they not spill yet? Like I, I would know. have been like, by the way, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like right in the group chat, yeah, right yeah. away. <laughs> On to update number three, the plot thickens. So all this drama is all unfolding. The maid of honor, who doesn't even know what's going on yet, is continuing her duties. We all get a four paragraph text from her outlining the dress code for each night of the bachelorette, per the bride's orders. Keep in mind, the bride was asking us all to go out and buy new outfits for each night of the trip and themes for each night, which are wild. Animal print Thursday, fox fur Friday, sparkle dress Saturday, and Barbie brunch Sunday. As if we were all going to go out and buy that shit one week before the trip. Thankfully, the bridesmaids seem to be waking up to the bullshit. Several of them wrote back saying they won't be able to pull together these outfits in time. And one flat out said, that's just not going to happen. But that's just a side story to the absolute shit show that is unfolding. Oh my, God. my mom is very involved now as she's paid a decent chunk of this wedding as well and does not like the fact that the bride is throwing around thousands of dollars from her dad as well as lying to the bridal party. Mm -hmm. She set up a meeting directly with sister-in-law to cut the bullshit and explain what's going on. She told sister-in-law she's going to inform the bridesmaids herself unless she gets a valid answer. Mm -hmm. At this point, I'm just shoveling down the popcorn waiting for the events to unfold. I'll be back tonight with hopefully the final update. <laughs> All right. Update number four. A swan ice sculpture. Come on. <laughs> she used the $7,000 to book a swan-shaped ice sculpture to be displayed at the reception and didn't tell anyone. $7,000? For ice? For literally water? That is... For H2O? Oh my god, I would love to see what it looks like. <laughs> Turns out her dad banned her from adding any more extras to the wedding design because it was already so expensive and unnecessary. When he Venmoed her for the Airbnb, she thought she was being sneaky to keep it instead. She didn't even tell my brother this. He only found out that her dad decided to cover the Airbnb because those two went out for cigars one night and it came up. 
So that mystery is solved thanks to my mini FBI crew. But now the real questions remain. Where the fuck is my $650 and how do I break the news to the bridesmaids? Mm -hmm. Out of the kindness of her soul, my mom is giving sister-in-law 24 hours to confess to the bridesmaids and figure out how to pay us back our money. Because you know what? I did not spend $650 on some damn ice. (laughs) I have kids to feed. I have bills to pay. It was taking everything in me not to text the bridesmaids group right now, but my mom is trying to give sister-in-law one opportunity to do the right thing. This has been a roller coaster. Don't know if anyone here is still interested, but let me know if I should post the final outcomes with the bridesmaids in one last update. Lord have mercy. (laughs) Wow. Yes, we want to hear. Yeah. All right. Update number five. Okay. Okay. As promised, here is the latest tea. Served boiling hot. This is a long update, and I'm going to try to get into everything. First, let's start with the bride's explanation to her family, myself, my mom, my brother, her fiancé, and her dad. She broke down crying, saying that wedding planning has been getting to her head, and she has been crushed under the pressure of having a perfect wedding, which she felt couldn't go on without this alleged ice swan. (laughs) Shut up. Does it say that? (laughs) I didn't buy her sob story. After the whole incident, I think she is delusional, controlling, attention-starving bridezilla who is using the wedding as a way to compete with other girls on Instagram. By the way, her job is influencer, if I didn't mention that yet. My brother took the bait. To be honest, I don't blame him. This is his future wife, and he said he wants to help her with her mental health and get her back into a good place. He is disturbed by the situation, but will continue to support her. The wedding is on for all of those who are curious. Now, on to the bridesmaids. After some threats from my mom, sister-in-law finally broke down and contacted the bridesmaid in our group chat. She sent a text that made my skin crawl. Hey ladies, you're my bride squad, so I feel compelled to share with you that my dad recently offered to pay for our batch accommodations. However, being that the wedding is so expensive, I've decided to pull this donation towards a wedding expense. I hope you all understand and I can't wait to party with you all next week. What? Oh, hell no. I immediately replied, making back sure everyone knew how the expense of an ice sculpture was. An (laughs) ice swan. Come on, people. Many of them replied and expressed how they would have loved to use that $650 for something more important. But ultimately, no one has backed out. One of the girls started a side chat without the bride and asked if there was any chance of getting our money back if we forced sister-in-law to cancel the reservation. Unfortunately, since we're only a week out, we aren't eligible for a refund. They decided to go through with the bachelorette party or else it would be literally a waste of $650. As for myself, I'm in the same boat. I would rather run myself over than go on this trip, but... $650 $650 is no small amount, and I can't fathom throwing that down the drain. I haven't made my final decision yet. If I do go, it will be solely to avoid eating the $650 plus my airfare. I will not be doing any of the planned events or outfits or even contributing a single penny more. Mm-hmm. I would have my own mini vacation as best as I can. I'm really upset that it seems like this crazy person is going to get her way after all. Wow. That's crazy. Oh, my God. I cannot believe she said it like that. Right? <laughs> Do you guys want more to this story? Is there yeah. another update? Oh, there's more. Oh, my God. Mini update 5.A. There are so many curious comments coming in, so I just want to keep you in the loop. More drama has unfolded among the bridesmaids. The side text without the bride popped off, and we all have agreed on the following. One. We will be going on the trip, but it is no longer a bachelorette trip. Mm, We will all be taking personal vacations with our hubbies slash significant others while staying at the property. We were forced into this beachfront mansion plus airfare, so we're going to make the most of it. Number two, we have all backed out of hosting and paying for the bridal shower. The bride will need to find another way to move forward with it if she wants to have it. 
We will attend as guest if she has it, and we will not be gifting anything. Mm. Mother of the bride is absolutely furious. But more on this later. Three, we are letting the bride know she needs to cancel the ice swan <laughs> and give us back our money. After some research, we doubt all of the $7,000 went towards the alleged swan because it doesn't seem like they even cost that much. I won't be back for a while because I want to save my next update for after the trip. So stay tuned. Okay. This is the most wildest update. Oh, God. So okay. let's get into the final update, number six. Warning, this is a long one. The absolute tea that I have today. It took me so long to write this because I'm at complete and utter lost for words. Where to begin? Let me start with this. There is no ice swan. There never was an ice swan. Wow. It was all an elaborate fabrication to design to distract everyone from where the missing $7,000 went. Shut up. R.I.P. Ice Swan. <laughs> Turns out there was a reason behind sister-in-law's luxury bachelorette location. Here's what happened. All the bridesmaids showed up to the beachfront mansion with our significant others. Sister-in-law had already been made aware that it is no longer a bachelorette, but to our complete shock, she was still stunned that we actually meant it. She arrived last in her pre-booked limo, absolutely fuming that no one else showed up to the limo meeting spot at the airport. <laughs> she was the only one still sticking to the original itinerary. Then she was flabbergasted that the husband slash significant unders were there with us. It was a comedy show at best. <laughs> anyway, we went about our individual mini vacations and eventually someone realized it had been about 48 hours since anyone had seen the sister-in-law or the bride. I assumed she was mad and either flew home or went to stay somewhere else. Then the unthinkable unfolds. Sister-in-law rolls up in the driveway in a wheelchair being pushed by two female nurses. The entire group jumped into action, thinking something was horribly wrong. Everyone ran over to see what was going on, but the nurses ushered us away and wheeled the bride into her room. At this point, I'm very concerned. We're all banging on the door, asking if she's okay. The nurses eventually leave and say they legally can't reveal the nature of her health issue, but assure us that she is absolutely fine. I call my brother and mom but get no answer. So I finally decide to call her mom, AKA the mother of the bride, who was furious that we took over the bachelorette party. Mother of a bride reveals what actually took place. She, a BBL. she isn't sick. She didn't have an health issue. There was no accident. She got her boobs done. No boobs. way. <laughs> they paid for her boobs. Yes, wow. folks. You read that correctly. She had planned, as part of the original itinerary, to disappear for an afternoon and return with a new set of melons. <laughs> was she still going? Like, was this pre-planned? Because how yeah. was she going to do all these activities? <laughs> That's true. That's yeah, true. Like, yeah. Wow. I'm sorry. What? The location of the beachfront mansion is conveniently five minutes away from a very famous cosmetic surgeon's office. The reason she needed this giant ass property was not really to host 11 girls. It was to host 11 girls plus the surgery recovery nurses and personal chefs she had reserved for after the operation. Oh my God. There is so much more that we need to unpack. I honestly don't know where to begin. One, what was her mother's knowledge slash involvement in all of this? Two, what was the cost of the procedure? I'm guessing around 7K. And why was it meant to be part of the bachelorette party? Yeah. Three. What was the purpose of the Ice Swan Live? <laughs> what the fuck? Am I the asshole for not giving a cupcake to a child who is not originally on the guest list? <laughs> I, 24 female, recently returned to my hometown after being away for college and work. My grandma often hosts potluck parties where her three kids and their families can hang out. I'm a pretty good baker and the couple of times I brought baked goods over, I got lots of compliments, especially from the kids. 
for the potluck we had last week, I had promised to make a cupcake for each and every kid, eight kids all under nine. The adults would get a two pound cake to be shared. I elaborately decorated the cupcakes and made sure I made enough. I didn't have the energy to make extras. On the day of the party, one of the cousins brought her boyfriend and his kid, Gina, seven female, over unannounced. Gina saw the cupcakes each kid got and wanted one too, so my cousin brought her to me to ask for a cupcake. I apologized and told him that all the cupcakes were spoken for and that she was welcome to have a slice of two pound cake as it was the same flavor. Gina said she wanted the pretty cupcake. My cousin then said I should just give her one because she was sure at least one of the kids would not show up. Again, I refused, saying that I promised all the kids cupcakes and would feel awful if anyone had to miss out on the promised cupcake. My cousin then walked away with Gina. She was right, though, as one of the cousin's girls, Amy, a female, was sick and couldn't come. However, her dad and older brother did, and the brother asked if he could take the cupcake back home to Amy, and I said yes. My cousin and Gina were in the kitchen when I brought the cupcake inside to pack it up for Amy. When they saw me packing the cupcake, they asked about it, and I said it was for Amy, who was sick. Pictures from the party were recently posted. Many parents posted pictures of their kids with my cupcake. My cousin sent me a message telling me that Gina was really upset that Amy, who wasn't even at the party, got a cupcake while she didn't. She said I was the asshole for hurting a little girl's feelings. I think I did the right thing giving the cupcake to Amy, as I still promised her one. Still, Gina was right there at the party. Am I the asshole? No. Am I the asshole for telling my wife she's entitled and has it too easy? I, male, 48, and my wife, Anne, female, 47, live by ourselves. Our kids have both moved on. I'm the breadwinner, and Anne has been the stay-at-home mom. Now, she's the housewife after our youngest moved out last year. What's changed is that she says she's owed for raising our kids and taking care of the household. She wants more personal time, less work around the house, and so I've basically taken over almost all of the housework, cooking three meals, cleaning the house, while still working a full-time job. I have never slacked on the chores that I did, such as the gardening, hard lifting, and etc. I was never an absent father as well. I bore with it for the past year, but she's gotten more abusive outright berating me in front of the kids when they visit that I'm only good for my strength and don't think about the household at all while she is doing less of the household work. It's gone to the point that I just want to relax in the car for a good solid minute before I go into the house because I know there is a long list of things that I will need Cooking to do. Cooking dinner. Last night she went out with her friends while I slept early for work. This morning I looked for the car keys for over 30 minutes which were not in the drawer we had always put them in. I woke her up to ask where she put them, and she just crumbled at me to find them myself before going back to sleep. I ended up finding them in her handbag and got to work late. I got home today to her screaming at me for invading her privacy by going through her handbag. I tried to tell her that she told me to find them myself, but she kept cutting me off saying I should have known Red better than to dig stuff. through her personal belongings that she has rights and I should respect them and I should have waited for her to wake up before going in to get the keys. It was when she said she didn't care if I was late to work that I lost it. Her exact line was, it's not like we're needing that stupid money anymore. I yelled back at her that she was entitled and selfish and the only reason she was able to enjoy her current time is because of my stupid money that she's been having it far too easy for the past year and she's wanted to see what she's owed. She can go back to either working or doing all the chores she's dumped on me. Anne was shell-shocked that I yelled at her. The rest of the night was quiet and she locked herself in our bedroom and hasn't come out. I've called her kids and told them what happened. My daughter agrees with me, but my son says that I may have been a bit too harsh to call her entitled and implied that I undermine her efforts all those years as a stay-at-home mom. We're going to take turns calling Anne, but I now wonder if I may have been overboard with yelling at her about taking it too easy. Daughter has suggested couples therapy and said that she's going to suggest it to Anne as well. I'm more than willing to do so as today's encounter made me reflect that I'm getting extremely tired and wary of this life. Am I the asshole? 
Am I the asshole for correcting the lie my half-siblings told? That my dad used to be their stepdad and he dumped them into foster care once our mother died. So I, 27 male, have three younger half-siblings. 24 female, 22 male, and 21 male. We're maternal half-siblings and I have a different dad than them. Their dad was dating my mom for several years, but they never got married. So he wasn't legally ever my stepdad, but... I guess he would kind of get the title since he lived with my mom and I lived with her half time. He was never interested in me and I was never interested in him. He used to creep me out, so I don't really think of him like that. But technically, their dad would have been my stepdad. Mine was never anything to them. When my mom was pregnant with the youngest, their dad was arrested and he went to prison. He was briefly released eight years later, but ended up going back to prison. He wasn't a good guy and has a long list of convictions now. When I was eight, my mom died. I was living with my dad full time when she passed. She wasn't taking good care of me and was taking her anger about her boyfriend's release out on me through a lot of yelling and talking to me like shit. When mom died, a social worker got involved and my half siblings were removed. They had no biological family willing to take them and the social worker asked my dad if he would consider a kinship care agreement so they could be raised alongside with me. My dad said that was not something he would be interested in, so my half-siblings were placed in foster care. No, you're not wrong, because he was never anything to them. He was their stepdad, and he dumped them in foster care when your mom passed away? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, no, there's not... They literally had to have made that up, because there's no possible fucking way for them to twist things to make that out to be true. You're not the asshole. My dad did agree to some visits. We had one visit every two months for years. The visits were never easy because my half siblings were asked to move in with my dad and me. And they would ask why my dad didn't visit and why couldn't they be with him instead so that we could all live together. They were separated most of the time in foster care and would put that on me and my dad as well. That's not, it sucks 100%, 100% it sucks, but that's not something that you or your dad are responsible for. Like that's not, it's not your job. It's not your job. Like, no. Like, I understand them being upset and being hurt because you guys ended up in two completely different situations. But for them to twist it and make it a lie, like, that's a little fucked up. That's that's fucked up. I refused the visits once I turned 16. I hadn't wanted them for a while, but it was more annoying than anything to have to repeat the same conversation every two months. My dad let me make the decision because he really had to drag me there for most of the visits anyway. We had no contact for years and then just over two years ago, they reached out to me and said they wanted a relationship again. I told them I didn't and they said they wouldn't mention my dad again. So I agreed and things were going all right. Not having to have to fight with them did make it a lot easier to care. But then a few weeks ago, I found out at my half brother's 21st birthday party that they've been lying to people claiming my dad was their stepdad and he dumped them in foster care as soon as my mom died. They apparently knew most people wouldn't think he was wrong if he was just my dad that they never knew. So they spun a story. I told people the truth when it came up and afterwards I told my half siblings that I was done with them and that their obsession with my dad taking them in is what drove me crazy before. I told them he wasn't their anything and lying was not the way to win me over. They accused me of ruining their lives by exposing their lies. Am I the asshole? No, absolutely not. They were perfectly fine with people thinking your dad was this terrible person that raised these kids and then just threw them away when their mother passed away because he had no biological link to them. But the moment you start telling people the truth, they're all upset because you're ruining their lives. Absolutely not. Honestly, babe, your siblings fucking suck. They fucking suck. Okay, so we all know that the system is flawed. Like, that's a really, really poor choice of words, but it's fucked up. We know that the system is fucked up, and a lot of these babies that go into the system, they they suffer, like, truly horrible things. Horrible, horrible things. And, you know, whenever you hear about kids being put into foster care, that's exactly where our minds go. But at some point, at some point... We have to hold them fucking accountable, regardless of what things were like in this, when they were in foster care that does not give them the right at 24, 22, and 21 years old to go around telling people lies. It does not make it okay. I honestly feel like OP's father was nowhere around when these kids, like when these kids became, 
he was nowhere around. OP said he was living with his dad half of the time and he was living with his mom half the time. And when his mom passed away, he wasn't even living there anymore. He stopped living there because the mom was treating him really, really bad. So he wasn't around at all, at all. So these kids not having a biological relative wanting to take them in is not dad's problem. It sounds mean, but it's not. He has no responsibility to these children and he should not be forced to have to take care of someone else's kids. They asked him and he chose not to. This really kind of, it just irks me a little bit because once again, we're reading a story where siblings were separated when they were younger, kept apart for God knows how long, were able to reconnect, get back together. And instead of it being a happy time, an emotional with happy tear time, it's a shit storm. It is a shit storm because I got something that you wanted and you're making that my problem. OP, you're absolutely not the asshole because your siblings lied straight up and out. They lied and you did the right thing by defending your dad because he did absolutely nothing wrong. Orange Am I the asshole stuff. for telling my friend she's not entitled to other people's money? I, 20 female, am now dealing with a problem concerning a friend of mine. I am a college student with a large social circle. Because of this, there are a few people in my circle that I don't know well enough. One of them is this girl named Talia. Talia happens to be very rich, which we did not find out until recently. We didn't realize it because she never presented herself as wealthier than those around her. She didn't wear expensive clothes, she didn't overspend, and she seemed to live her life as a middle-class person at best. My best friend Jada was scrolling through Talia's Instagram when she came up upon her brother. Her brother uploaded a picture of their beautiful mansion on Instagram, revealing their wealth. To me, this was just an odd thing to discover, but Jada was visibly unhappy. When our friend group goes out to places like restaurants or clubs, we always share the bill evenly. Jada was outraged to find that Talia was rich since she felt Talia had enough money to cover everyone, Amazon but decided to keep this information hidden. When I told her she wasn't entitled to Talia's money, Jada became enraged. She said it was the principal, and Talia was wrong for pretending to be poor. She then confronted Talia in our group chat. Talia has not answered since. I advised Jada to calm down since it wasn't that serious, and she told me I was just as wrong as Talia for supporting her actions. I really want to give Jada the benefit of the doubt because she doesn't come from a family that has a lot of money. So there could be some personal feelings involved in this. However, I also think that Talia isn't required to spend more than she has to. So am Great I the asshole? Stuck. Am I the asshole for telling my grandpa my dad stole my wedding money? I, 27 female, am getting married in two months. From the beginning, we were wanting to elope, but then we decided that we wanted more traditional wedding, but still in a low budget, as low as you can get with the prices these days, because we didn't want to regret not doing it. We spoke with our parents about a budget maybe like eight months ago, and both sides promised to give $10,000 each, and we would cover whatever was left and the honeymoon. We were very grateful for that. My mother-in-law has already paid her 10000 up front, which helped with all the down payments and venue costs. My side was supposed to pay their 10k three weeks before the wedding to cover food, drinks, and any final expenses. Long story short, my father, who has a history of narcissistic behavior, decided last minute that he is not going to do that anymore. We are now two months out from the wedding and he is no longer willing to pay for anything and we have no savings to cover the cost. We have already paid out of our section as well. We cannot cancel due to our contracts and we would rather not take out a loan. I tried reaching out to my grandpa to ask for assistance and he told me that he already gave over $1,000 to my dad for the wedding. I found out my dad pocketed that money. Am I the asshole if I tell my grandpa that he stole the money? I'm afraid of causing drama and making the situation even worse. Would I be the asshole? Am I the asshole for refusing to go to my sister's wedding, knowing that it means most of our family won't attend? Throwaway account. I, 40 female, am significantly older than my sister, 25 female. As such, after she was born, I was repeatedly looked over and parentified by my parents in favor of her. Examples of this include giving my old clothes and toys to her without my permission, rather than preserving them as keepsakes for my childhood. In short, my inner child has had to do a lot of healing over the years. I am low contact with my parents and sister, but apparently she is engaged 
and wants me to be a part of her wedding party. Now, I am not comfortable around children of any age. It is part of my trauma. Being around them, for me, comes with a sense of responsibility that reminds me of the neglect I suffered at the hands of my family. My sister knows this, so I assumed with her asking me to be in the wedding that the wedding would be child-free. During a discussion, she mentioned her fiancé's best friend's daughter would be serving as a flower girl and our cousin's son would be the ring bearer. I reminded her that I would not be comfortable around children and expressed my disappointment that she would invite me to be in the wedding that is not child-free. She looked sad for a second and told me that there were many young children and families that are close to her and her fiancé and the day would feel incomplete without them. And if I really wasn't comfortable around children to that extent, she would understand if I am unable to attend. I was shocked that she would invite me in the favor of random kids and it reminded me of being thrown aside in favor of her when we were so young. So I left to collect myself. I attempted to ask my parents to talk some sense into her, but surprise, surprise, they took her side. At this point, I was deeply hurt and needed an outlet, so I did something that might make me the asshole. I am friends with some other family members on Facebook, and I made a post about how my sister was kicking me out of the wedding and that my parents were taking her side, all because of the trauma that they contributed to themselves. I didn't go into detail because I didn't think it was anyone else's business. I just wanted to vent. Now people are apparently refusing to go to my sister's wedding unless I am reinstated as part of the wedding. She and my parents are begging me to come, but still refusing to budge on the children being there, so it doesn't make much of a difference to me. I do feel bad because I didn't know that our family would refuse to come, but I cannot go to an event that has many children running around or retract my statement because I don't want the family to think I lied. Am I the asshole for refusing to go? Am I the asshole for telling my brother that he shouldn't bring his wife to our dad's funeral? My brother has been married to his wife for four years. His wife, I'll call her Sarah, is on the spectrum. Sarah doesn't have much of a filter. If she thinks of something, she'll say it. This hasn't been causing issues until this last year. If she said something that was inappropriate or rude, someone would correct her, usually my brother, and she'll apologize. There's been a few uncomfortable situations, but usually we get an apology and everyone moves on. The main issues began when dad started going downhill. He's had many health issues before, but he really went down last summer. My mom is the main caretaker of him during this time. Sarah at this time has made many comments that were rude and inappropriate about him. She usually apologizes, but my mom's patience is basically gone. Many conversations were had about it. No, you're not the asshole. We've talked about this many a times. Just because she's on the spectrum does not mean she cannot be taught. How many times do people have to bring something up to you? Before we start to, you know, realize like our behavior needs to change. You're apologizing for it. So once you've been corrected, you know that it's wrong. You know that it's wrong. She can be fucking taught that the things she's saying and the comments that she's making are wrong. A big blow up happened at Christmas. Sarah made a comment about how he looked and how all the tubes around him reminded her of a hamster. So you came over... Seen my dad dying, hooked up to all types of fucking tubes. And despite the many conversations we've had about your fucking behavior and your inappropriate comments, you stated out loud that he makes you think of a fucking hamster. She can't come to the funeral. She can't fucking come because we've talked about this many fucking times and she continues to do it. She's not learning shit. No, hell no, she can't fuck, you are not the asshole. The comment wasn't appropriate. Yes, we all know he looks like crap, but he's dying. My mother told her to get out of her house. She apologized, but my mom told her she never changes her behavior and her apology meant shit to her. Big argument later, that relationship between them now is shaky. My dad passed this week and the funeral is this weekend. My mom is a wreck and I called it my brother. I told him it would be a horrible idea to bring his wife to the funeral. If she makes an inappropriate comment at the funeral, it would destroy a lot of relationships and I think my mom would lose her shit. I also explained that even with his help before, it hasn't stopped her from making these comments. Everyone's going to be in high emotions and it would be a really bad situation. Also, she wasn't very respectful when he was alive. 
This started an argument and he's calling me a jerk. Am I the asshole for giving him that advice? Absolutely not. Hell no. No, you are not wrong because you said you guys have had many conversations about this. Many fucking conversations. No, because if you cannot stop making disrespectful and rude fucking comments around me, I don't fucking want you around me. I don't want you around. I don't give a fuck what type of event is going on. I don't give a damn that somebody just died. Bitch, your mouth don't fucking shut. Your mouth does not fucking shut. I don't care that she's on the spectrum. I do not because she's a fully functional grown ass adult. She is an adult that has been fucking married. She can learn. She can fucking learn. OP is not the asshole here at all. He doesn't want his sister-in-law disrespecting his father at his funeral, even though she's done it multiple times while the poor man was still alive and on his deathbed. Absolutely not. No, you're not wrong. Your brother needs to pull his head out of his wife's ass and look the fuck around. Am I the asshole for using the handicap stall in a public bathroom? I, 27 female, had bunion surgery a week ago and have a hard time getting around right now. I'm using crutches and finally got the hang of them. My mom took me to an appointment a few days ago to check on the healing progression. Now, for more information, this doctor's office is like an hour away from where I live, so on the way back, I had to use the washroom. It was lunchtime, so my mom pulled into a McDonald's so we could get a cheap lunch and I could go to the bathroom. Another thing to note is I'm having a hard time getting up from the toilet with the heavy cast and crutches. As I was in the stall, I heard someone come into the bathroom and huff that the handicapped stall was in use. I felt bad, so I tried to hurry up the best I could. It took me longer than expected because, again, I was having issues getting up and I had to use the bar to the one side. Well, when I finally got out of the stall, this woman started screaming at me that her child, who was in a wheelchair, really needed that bathroom and I was being selfish for using it. She then proceeded to yell at me the entire time I was trying to wash my hands, and I was holding back tears because I don't like people yelling at me. I feel bad for her child, who was in the wheelchair, but I still feel like I'm covered and not the asshole. But maybe I'm wrong. Am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for still going to my daughter's wedding, even though my other daughter isn't invited due to her panic attacks? I have two daughters. They're 27 and 24. The issue is my youngest daughter got into a bad situation when she was in high school. She now has panic attacks and is on meds for almost eight years now. My oldest is not close to her younger sibling. It boils down to celebrations usually getting interrupted by a panic attack. I know my youngest isn't doing it on purpose, but it really sucks when you're at a graduation and a panic attack happens. Sometimes she can get away and calm down, but sometimes she pushes herself too hard and it results in an attack. Now to the issue. My oldest is getting married. Everyone was invited to her engagement party and during the event, the youngest had an attack. The event ended soon after since the whole incident ruined the vibe. My oldest was really upset and kept going on about how she shouldn't have invited her. Invitations were sent out and my oldest didn't invite her younger sibling. I asked her about it and she informed me she wants her wedding to go smoothly and unlike all the other events, not get interrupted by a panic attack. I asked her to reconsider and she said no. She wants one day where it's all about her. I completely get that. I completely get that. Like we understand that she's not, you know, your youngest child is not doing this on purpose, but as the oldest child to never have an event, to not have an event simply that was about them, for them, not be interrupted. I completely understand your oldest going the route that she's going because she wants her wedding to be about her. Her engagement party was about her up until the point her sister had a panic attack and then the event was over. It was over because people were no longer vibing the way that they were. I completely understand why she chose not to invite her. My youngest is really upset and asked me to skip the wedding. That's a little selfish, no? I informed her that I will not. I, do, I don't want to miss her sister getting married. This resulted in an argument and she called me a jerk. I'm looking for opinions. My daughter gets attacks at all types of events, not just her sister's. So this isn't a I'm trying to ruin my sister event situation. She has been seeing a therapist. I'm glad. I'm glad you threw that in there near the end because I was strongly, strongly going to advise that you put your daughter in therapy. 
Put your daughter in therapy because she has to understand that until we get this under control, there are going to be certain situations and events and parties and things that you're not going to be invited to. Because as the person getting married and as the person hosting this event, I have every right to want it to go down the way I want it to go down without you having a panic attack in the middle of it sometime during it. Like I, I should, I am fucking entitled to that. So your daughter has to understand there's things she's not going to be in, invited to. The main issues with the panic attacks is that they come on suddenly. She could be doing fine all night and something will push her over the edge. She's a million times better than she was when she was a teenager having panic attacks twice a day. So I came to the comment section because I really, I really wanted more information because truly from the bottom of my asshole, I feel like little sister is doing this to steal the, the spotlight. But OP is adamant that this is not that type of situation. Okay, my next question is, when your daughter feels like she's being triggered, her panic attacks are being triggered. Like, cause OP said in the comments that, you know, she'll be okay. And then something eventually will trigger her at the event. So my question is when she knows that she's being triggered, is she not capable of excusing herself from the situation? Or is this a situation where she just, her whole body is frozen and she has to sit in the middle of a room and have a panic attack because the story said that her sister's engagement party ended after she had a panic attack. So I feel like she wasn't off to the corner somewhere. She didn't go sit in the bathroom. Like this You're happened in the middle back. of the dance or like the at the dinner table. You know, like I feel like it's happening right in the middle of everything. Is it not possible for her to move, like excuse herself to a quiet area, a, a, a different place, Greater or does it just happen walnuts? and she's in OMG. full panic mode right here, right now at events? And also, if there's th something at the events that trigger her, maybe, hear me out, maybe her going to these events is not what she needs to be doing right now My until favorite. she's able to get this under control. Am I the asshole for not financially supporting my family anymore and abandoning them in their time of need? Here's some context. I'm a 31-year-old male with a 25-year-old sister who lives at home. My parents are in their 60s. My mom and my sister have never worked a real job other than under-the-table things like babysitting. My dad was the only earner in the family. They were making it until about 10 years ago when money started to get tight. My parents' house went into foreclosure and my mom still didn't get a job. I gave them money to try to help out, but they lost the house anyway. Again, no job was secured by my mom. That was 10 years ago. Fast forward to today. The house they live in now is in foreclosure again, and no one seems to have a sense of urgency to seek employment. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Turns out money was tight these last 10 years because my dad was a functioning opioid addict. Oh, damn. He really started to spiral these last six months and is now in prison for the next two years. I've always been the person in my family to pick up the pieces and be the one everyone turns to. Since my dad has been in jail, I haven't spoken to him. I've also stopped talking to my mom and my sister because they haven't paid me for bills that I have in my name that they're responsible for. That's you know, rule number one, we don't let nobody put nothing in our name. We don't let nobody, nobody put nothing in our name. Absolutely not. That's rule number one. They haven't paid me for bills that I have in my name that they're responsible for, but yet they send my dad money in jail. Where are they getting the money from if ain't nobody working? Where are they getting the money from? I gave them months of encouragement to try to find a job and I kept paying the bills while they tried to figure it out. When I asked my mom for money recently, because months have gone by with no employment secured, my mom straight up ignored my calls and text messages. I'm done. They tell me that I'm an asshole for leaving them in their time of need, and they've been trying to find jobs Copy all the before time, cleaning. but it's hard to get one. I call bullshit. I'm tired of being the fixer. I'm tired of being an enabler. Am I the asshole for not paying for them anymore and for not being in their life? As someone who used to be the fixer, no, I don't think you're the asshole at all because I know what it's like. I know that it is a very difficult decision when you finally make the choice to 
stop being the fixer in the family because it comes with a whole lot of worry of what's going to happen to them and then who's going to help. And that's not for us to worry about. It is time for you to think about you. Take care of you. Put you first. It's time for you to do that. And you're not the asshole. I truly feel like if your mom and your sister are capable of sending money to your dad in prison for the next two years, they are capable of figuring something out to take care of themselves. To take care of themselves because I, it sounds like they are able to work. Because I feel like if they weren't, OP definitely would have said that, you know, mom has this, this, and that issue and sister has this, that, and the other. And that's why they don't work. But he literally said they just do not work. They've never had a job. So it seems like they can work. They can fucking work. They just don't want to. And by OP choosing to stop helping them, it's going to force them now to help themselves. You thought my stalker story was scary? Wait till you hear about this one. This incident actually took place last week and I am traumatized. I was hungry and usually I'll go downstairs, make myself something to eat, but what I was craving that day was gonna take me a while to make and I had work an hour before that. So I know it's gonna be in a rush. Usually when I'm in a rush, I end up being in a bad mood. So I decided to go to El Pollo Loco to get a salad. Once I arrived to El Pollo Loco, the first thing that I did was go through the drive-thru because one thing about me, I am not about to get down. I was near my city and I did not want to run into familiar faces. There was one person ahead of me in the drive-thru and it was a mortifico and if I'm not mistaken, it was a male. The guy in the motorcycle orders, and then shortly after, I start to order. And then once I'm finished ordering, I end up driving to the window. As I'm driving to the window to pay for my food and also pick it up, I noticed that the motorcycle that was ahead of me stopped a little bit ahead of me. So like he left the window, but he was still like in the drive-thru, if that makes any sense. Like he still hadn't left the drive-thru. And I noticed that he was talking to like this homeless person. I would assume it was a girl, but at the same time, it looked like a guy. I don't know. Point is, there was a homeless person. I don't know what exactly went down in their conversation, but you can tell that the homeless guy was a little bit upset and you can tell also that the guy in the motorcycle wanted to leave, but the homeless guy wouldn't let him. And me being a girl in the drive-thru, I'm literally stuck, keep in mind. Like if I'm in a drive-thru, what am I going to do? Reverse out? I can't reverse out. And uh, obviously I can't go forward because there's literally an altercation happening in front of me. So luckily while the altercation was happening, I was able to pay for my food and also get my food. I'm a really bad overthinker and the only thing crossing my mind was what if i put my window down and then this homeless person tries to come at me and i was like no i can't and i feel like what made me feel a little bit more secure is the fact that i have my windows tinted so i knew that no one was able to see in my car but just knowing that i'm stuck in the drive through was killing me i noticed that the homeless man ends up dropping his stuff on the floor for who knows what reason and the guy in the motorcycle took that opportunity to literally drive off what really is this homeless man going to do when a motorcycle takes off on him like be for real this man can literally just like drive off and you won't be able to catch him you know because i feel like motorcycles are pretty fast so here i am still in the drive through and i also couldn't just drive off because the homeless man dropped his stuff in the middle of the drive through so if i were to drive off i would literally run over his things i would feel better if i run over his things like at the end of the day this man is homeless he has nothing so if i run over the only thing that he has i would feel so guilty so this homeless person picks up his belongings and then he starts to walk towards this way because if you were to go out through the drive through it's literally like a wall so in order for him to actually leave that shopping center he has to go like back this way and so he was coming this way and again i was literally losing my shit because i was like what if he comes to me next and sure enough this man came to me next like when he was picking up his stuff he literally looked up and like just looked directly in my car and again you can't see my car because of my tent but i'm literally the only girl in this car and although this man doesn't know that i 
I was traumatized and I was ready to lose my sh This man was like walking away, but instead of him walking towards like the ramp and the grass area, he was still walking through the drive through So I just knew that this man was going to pass by like my passenger side. So sure enough, this man walks by my passenger side. And I kid you guys not, all I hear is someone yanking on my door, like trying to open it and get in. And I was like, oh my God, there is no way. And so I started to freak out and all I do is like press the gas to try to get away. As I'm trying to drive off, this man is still holding on to the door handle. I went in absolute panic mode. He was like holding on to my like car handle and he was like, like let me in, like give me some money, like da 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 da. So as he's yelling at me through the other side of the window, I noticed that his backpack starts to slip off of his shoulder. If it wasn't for his backpack slipping off of his shoulder and him trying to adjust it, I don't know what the heck would have happened. Because him adjusting his backpack obviously allowed him to remove his hand out of my door handle and that allowed me to just press the gas and dip out. Oh my god, I was so traumatized. And thank god I got my food, you know, but after that whole incident, I just wasn't hungry anymore and I didn't eat. I did go to work but i feel like i just couldn't work properly because that was the only thing crossing my mind thank god that i'm the type of person who anytime i get in my car the first thing i do is lock my doors but even then i feel like it's so sad that even as a female the first thing that one has to do is watch her surroundings and then you know lock their car doors as soon as they get into the car i feel like that's just so sad like the fact that this is our reality is very upsetting i'm honestly very grateful that nothing happened to me yes i'm still haunted by the situation but best believe i'm gonna go back to it for a local because ain't no way that that's gonna stop me maybe not that certain location but i would definitely be going back to get my classic dosa salad that is the end of probably the second most scariest thing that i've been through if you guys have not watched my stalker story definitely scroll down and watch that video because oh! thank you guys always for showing me so much love and support i love you guys and i'll see you guys in my next video bye